Twisting a parabola at the radius of curvature is problematic because a parabola suffers from spherical aberration. So the traditional way of doing this is to use a cooter mask, which is basically a mask with a series of whole pairs at different radial positions across the mirror. Then we use the uh, Foucault test to find the, the radius of each of these whole pairs and relative to the central, central zone, each, each zone will have a L delta radius and then we could pair the delta radius of all these zones to the theoretical values that your parabola would have and you can use a program like figure XP. If you go to the Stellafane links page you can get information on how to build a Foucault tester and more information on doing the test but uh, from my experience I found that beginners don't do very well at doing this test. Here I break with tradition and I recommend a beginner use a null test because interpretation is easy, there's no analysis, it's just like testing a sphere. There are many null tests but the absolute simplest one is the Spoolhoff null. In the Spoolhoff the light source is moved a distance away, not at infinity but far enough away that it approaches affinity and you can see in the graph here that uh, if you're making a 4 inch f8 mirror you only have to place it 14 feet away for it to be 1 tenth wave but on the other hand um, if you're making a, a big fast mirror like a 20 inch f3.5 you're going to be needing to place the light source about a half a mile away this is because we're actually testing for an ellipse and not a parabola. But an easy solution is to use the Dahl conjugate test, which is a similar test, but it uses a Plano convex lens near focus to null out the residual under correction from the ellipse. With this test, you don't need to make a Foucault tester. You can b build the telescope first and use it as a test fixture. The Plano convex lens is an off-the-shelf lens. It's not expensive and you only use a small section in the middle and it, which will always be good. Plus the uh, light source doesn't have to be so far away. It can be at a more convenient uh, distance, say 50 feet or 100 feet or so. So how do we set up this test? Well, when you determine how far away your light source is, all you really need to do is to compute what the lens to knife head spacing is. You can do that uh, with a optical ray trace program such as Oslo EDU, which you can download from this site. And it'll give you the greatest flexibility in determining what lens you might use or how far away to put the light source. But if you're not into ray tracing, the other way that you can determine the lens uh, knife edge spacing is to use Excel and use the equations on these uh, three graphs. Using Zmax, I ray traced a number of different focal length mirrors to find the knife edge to lens spacings. This is for a red light source placed 100 feet away for different F ratio of mirrors took this data, put it into Excel, plotted the graph, and let Excel find the equation for the graph. This was also using a standard off-the-shelf lens, a 300 millimeter focal length, a KPX 205 from Newport. There are three plots here, one for f3.5, f5, and f8 mirror. So you calculate the spacings for your, for your uh, focal length and then do the interpolation if your mirror is somewhere in between. Okay, let me get busy and show you how to test a telescope mirror. I'm going to test this 10 inch uh, travel scope that I built that's already completed. Um, but you can check any telescope that's already finished or that you have a, an optical uh, tube for. You want to be sure that your diagonal is good. Uh, if you're in doubt, uh, use the Raleigh water test that's in another video that I've uh, posted. 
This mirror has a 44 inch focal length and in this uh, Excel screen I've plugged in the three different formulas for calculating the lens to knife edge separation. I've plotted the three different F ratios on, on the plot shown here and because this mirror is f4.4 it looks like it, it's on the range of 1.612 but even if you'd use the values for the f8 or for the f3.5 the difference is really trivial on the order of a hundredth of a wave you also want to check the amount of focus shift that you get and using this equation 1 over f equals 1 over d1 plus 1 over d2 D1 is the the long conjugate and D2 is the short conjugate. I calculated the focus shift of 1.67 inches. Too much of a focus shift will cause vignetting at the secondary mirror, in which case you need to either increase the primary secondary spacing or better just increase the light source distance. But this amount of uh, focus shift is not that much and it's also shortened up by the null lens. Okay, so here's the helical focuser from my telescope with an inch and a quarter adapter and um, my null lens. It's Opto Sigma 300 millimeter focal length lens but it's equivalent to the KPX 205. The two inch diameter fits real nicely into a, a two inch focuser. So, so I'm going to make this into my null lens and um, remember I needed 1.612 which actually is only a little bit longer than my inch and a quarter adapter. So I've made up these strips from the Kydex like plastic and I'm going to set one of them in here. It's, they're nice and tight on the diameter. And take my focuser and just push that down. Then I'm going to take my lens. Convex side goes down, flat side up, which is towards the primary mirror. Go to my two inch focuser. And then I'm going to add another plastic ring to hold it in. and push that down all the way around Oops. but there you go nice holder for my null lens and I want to set it to the 1.612 but the holes too big for my calipers so I'm going to use this washer to and first zero my calipers on the top of this washer and then put this washer here and set my calipers to 1.612 yeah. <laughs> That's close enough. And I want to need to bring up my inch and a quarter adapter to touch the bottom of my calipers. Tighten it down. That's a real easy way to set up a null lens, knowing that I have the right distance between the end of the focuser and the convex side of the null lens. Piece of cake. You need to have the telescope uh, properly laser collimated before running the test, so here's how you should do it. Okay, so I've got my laser turned on, stuck into my focuser, and you want to be sure that the laser dot 
hits uh, in the middle of the secondary in the right spot. So it's a little bit off center because of the the offset. I've also got. Uh, you want to check and make sure that the laser hits the center of your mirror. I've got a dot in the center of this primary. It's maybe not easy to see. I got my laser hitting pretty much dead on in the center. But now my uh, primary mirror is not lined up quite right because you see when the laser dot comes coming back is not quite on center. So I need to adjust my primary mirror to bring those together. So I can adjust that. That looks pretty good, and so it should be visible in the um, in the uh, in the laser. And so um, you can see that the laser comes back to the center center opening of the laser. So my telescope is is lined up properly. And then for my light source, I have a, a red LED, uh, a bright really uh, hooked up with a, some redropping resistors. Makes a very nice source. I'm going to place that about 100 feet away. Okay, it's starting to get dark now, so I'm going to get my light source set up on my tripod way back there in my backyard, 100 feet away. Okay, this is going to be kind of hard to do. I'm hand holding a, a camera at the Ronky screen. And it's not easy to photograph. You can see that the Ronky is nice and straight, as it should be. Hand holding my digital camera because I don't, I don't have a holder for it, but you can see the the Ronky. This is outside of focus. Not not easy to hold study here. Okay. I almost got this on my tra tripod set up. This is the Ronky inside of focus. It's kind of hard to kind of hard to see here. Well, I just hard to get this camera lined up with the aperture of the camera on the return image. This is another shot. Uh, inside of focus, the bands aren't very distinct like they are outside of focus. And I don't have this quite centered up. You can get some vignetting probably from the camera lens. But it shows you that the test works. Dow conjugate test. Here's more information on the Dow conjugate test.